Hey, welcome to Brightworks. What are you looking at? 1971, 911T. We're on our last step for what uh, we've been asked to do, which is install the sump plate. Now, the original sump plates on these earlier cars, uh, flat. The problem is what we did here was we put in an upgraded, uh, I think this was a 964 part number oil pump. So it has an integrated screen. It's not the screen that comes out. So in order to be able to make room for that, the flat plate, absolutely just right there. It's already making contact. So way back when Porsche put in a sump plate, you can see the little concave uh, dish out area there. Well, the sump plate that they made though for the 77, 78 turbos, it didn't have a drain plug in it. So we are all kind of forced to go out into the world and find uh, sump plates. Now, it used to be a buddy of mine, Aaron Burnham made these and they were absolutely fantastic. Aaron has found bigger, bigger and better things to do, so he's not making those anymore. So I got this one from LN Engineering, and let me tell you, boys and girls, the weight of the aluminum alone is probably why it costs so much. But we're gonna get past that. It is a little, this flange is a little thick for my tastes because this is not a precision spot, right? Definitely not a precision spot. So we put this guy on awfully close and actually wobbles a little bit. We may end up trimming this. I'm not sure that we need to, but we might. Now, the other trick when you put these in is your original studs are gonna be way too short. So what you've got to do is you've got to take out each one of the original studs and they send you in the kit with this thing, they send you studs that also have an Allen uh, built into them. So like almost idiot proof, probably overkill for uh, uh, what's really needed here but hey that's how they send it that's how they send it um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get all of these studs out we're going to swap them all over to this stud because as you can see we've got what maybe three or four threads there and then here you've got plenty of room to get well we don't even have a gasket in there yet right so we'll use one of those big fat paper gaskets and uh, we'll probably use some Dow 720 on this. But yeah, way overbuilt. <laughs> just It's just too big. It's just far too big. And right now there's not really something better on the market. So if anybody out there builds parts for Porsches, um, that might be a, a good opportunity. Anyway, we're going to figure out how to get this guy installed. Um, you know, maybe they're trying to use it as a heat sink. I don't know. But definitely compared to, you know, Porsche basically put a piece of sheet metal on the bottom there. So we'll get on with it. <clears throat> it is a fancy part. If we were making 800 horsepower, I'd say the extra BTUs that we can shed right here are probably worth it. But uh, no, we're not making 800 horsepower. Don't anybody get too excited. All right, we're going to get on with it, get the studs changed out and show you uh, the rest of the process. All right, we got our studs in. So now the last thing that we'll check is just to make sure that none of the studs are bent because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a uh, the green paper gasket, Victor Rhine's gasket, but we're gonna use uh, uh, Dow 720 on it. So you can kind of see this guy doesn't really wanna fit flat. So even though we've cleaned some stuff up, but that gasket should take up all of that stuff. So not a huge deal, we'll get there. Um, they sent some relatively, I mean, they sent all the hardware that you need. You certainly could do it yourself, but we're gonna change them out. We're, we used uh, gold nuts on everything on this car or on this motor build. So we're gonna use uh, gold Loctites on there or lock nuts, all metal lock nuts as opposed to nylock stuff. So if the owner ever does have to pull it down, he can just reuse those uh, all metal not lock nuts. So we're gonna get on with that. We're gonna get the uh, um, gasket installed with some, uh, some Dow 720. And then we are gonna put in the uh, uh, rear main seal because we're about to wrap this little lady up.
So we got our sump plate installed and um, what we did instead of using even the washers that they sent us, these are the um, crush washers, sort of crush washers that you use on the chain boxes. And then also did the uh, uh, all metal lock nuts. So if anybody from Precision Matters is listening, hey, can you reduce the OD of this thing just a hair? I mean, it's, it's big. It just needs to be a little smaller. That would be the only gripe I had with it. Um, I did bead blast the inside surface uh, just to make sure that, you know, shiny stuff doesn't always seal very well. So giving it a, a nice matte finish. All right, so the next step is we're going to install our rear main seal. And we've got this very fancy white rear main seal from Porsche. Um, the old school stuff used to be white, but this one, because rear main seals are like the bane of the existence for mag motors. And we didn't need a speedy sleeve. It wasn't that, uh, the crank wasn't that worn, but um, after talking to my machinist, uh, he had a great idea. He said, these are the ones that work the best. So we're going to give this a shot, but uh, you can see I've already got my tool installed partially on there and uh, everything's been super cleaned. So I'm going to get you guys set up as we, uh, as we use the tool to install this thing. All right, we've got our rear main seal situated and it's over our tool. It's just starting to uh, be on the crankshaft. And the inner lip, I lubed that with a half of a drip of oil. And the outer lip, I always leave dry. Some guys say uh, Cure LT, but Cure LT, they tend to squeeze out. So definitely do it dry. Now, why do I use a tool and not a block of wood? Well, you can see that there is a little spring on the inside of the rear main seal. And a lot of times what will happen is as you're beating it in with a block of wood, which a lot of people have done for a gazillion years, sometimes that little spring can fall off. So the tool that we use uh, just puts a gentle pressure on it. It's not necessarily so gentle, but uh, it puts a pressure on it so that you're uniformly pressing into it and you have a less likely chance of the uh, of the seal of that uh, spring falling out. So this uh, rear main seals are the bane of my existence. They call them radial seals. I've watched a bazillion videos from uh, L Ring, from all the companies that make these things, and it's almost like you got a 50/50 shot that they don't weep. So we don't want it to weep. We're using the uh, best one that Porsche has right now for this application. And as you can see, all I'm doing is just tightening down the nut around the outside of the tool. And these tools, they're not cheap, but it's also not cheap to have to pull a motor back out of a car and split the tranny because you didn't, uh, you didn't do this one operation. So, got these for all different size engines now. I think I have four or five of them. All right, we are feeling it bottom out. So I don't want to do anything too crazy. And we're not, you know, worried about depth setting and all of that stuff because, like I said, when we had the crank polished, everything looked really good. It was just that it was on the low side of the spec. So being on the low side of the spec, hey, let's just use a, uh, that seal from Porsche. So I always like to run my finger around it, make sure it feels uniform, absolutely feels uniform. So we are gonna call this little guy good and installed. And we'll take our tool out and go from there. But I'll show you one more time once we get the tool out of the way, how it looks. All right, so our seal is in. And you might be asking yourself, hey, why is this guy working under the yoke? Why didn't he flip the engine over? Well, <laughs> that's a good question, fair question. It was because I wanted to install that thing. I got so excited about it, I just flipped the engine on its side. 
and then I realized, oh, wait a minute, I used the, the uh, Dow 720, it needs 24 hours to cure, and I've put enough assembly lube and oil on rocker shafts and things like that, that I don't want anything dripping down onto that. So instead of messing around too much, I mean, yeah, no big deal. But you can see a nice uniform uh, edge here, which means we put the seal in square. So she's in as square as she can possibly go um, based on uh, human uh, hands and using that tool. So no excuses there. All right, next up, we're gonna put the flywheel on. All right, so there we have it, flywheel's installed. No tricks to the flywheel, just make sure you put your uh, pilot bit bearing in and make sure that you put your uh, washer under the, uh, under the bolt. You'll know pretty quick if you forgot your washer because you'll bottom out the bolts and the flywheel will be loose. But that's a wrap, folks. Let this guy dry overnight, that specifically. And uh, yeah, well, one other thing we're gonna do, ironically, I love irony. You guys that have watched my channel know I love pointing it out too. So ironically, ordered this from LN. LN has convinced everybody on the planet they used, need to use a magnetic drain plug. And it ships with a drain plug that is not magnetic. So we're gonna put a magnetic drain plug in there um, that way, I mean, especially during engine break-in, right? You got to get all that stuff out of there. So you got the magnet here. You'll have a magnet in the sump, and then you also have your oil filter. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> you can't believe it was no magnetic uh, uh, plug. It was just this. So there she is. That's as far as we take her. And we're going to wrap her up. We'll probably do a video of that when we go to shipper. I may actually throw a junk set of headers on here because I would rather the motor be supported. But uh, yeah, very cool build, very cool owner. I can't wait to hear when he fires it up. Hey, if you like these kind of videos, check us out at brightworks.com. And uh, yeah, hit that subscribe button. Have a fantastic day.